Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to News Dose. And we are getting to that point when we start to ramp up for E3, aka the gamers' holiday. I know a lot of us look forward to E3 and everything, but however, over the last few years, there's been a major shift in how the game industry works. And the question just kind of continues to rise Do we even need E3 anymore? Or at the very least, do these companies, and that might be the more important question to ask here, do they need E3? Well, that's once again the case this year. The question of, is this the end of E3, is certainly appearing to be a reality more now than ever before. Also, we got a pretty significant update in regards to the ongoing story surrounding 343 and Halo's future. There's definitely a lot happening with Halo right now, though. As to whether or not you should be concerned, we'll, we'll get into that a little later on today. To start things off, though, let's just go and talk about PSVR 2 because a strange report by Bloomberg made its way online claiming that Sony has halved its launch forecast after disappointing pre-order numbers. According to them, Sony originally planned for 2 million units, but after a lackluster pre-order period, they've instead scaled things back to 1 million units for its first quarter. Now, if this is actually true, and this is still a big if, we'll come back to that here in just a second, but if this is really true, then this does not bode well for future PlayStation VR 2 support. VR as it stands is certainly a niche market, so support is already limited compared to traditional games. Now, Sony in the past has had some success with PlayStation VR, but the market has changed quite considerably. There's a lot more competition now, especially in regards to the Oculus Quest 2. But if Sony really does struggle out of the gate, then we could see a similar situation that we saw with the PlayStation Vita. I mean, as a huge Vita supporter myself, I absolutely love that console, but it never garnered the support that it deserved. I mean, it really was just such a shame, but once it started to struggle, Sony backed off on making first party games for it. And slowly but surely, big third party games, they diminished as well. So considering Sony's history with platforms that struggle early on, this is not necessarily the early sign that you're looking for when it comes to PlayStation VR 2. However, one of the reasons that we're talking about this report in the first place is because despite this report making the rounds online, I mean, it is coming from a reputable website after all, but however, Sony has since come out denying that this report is true. GameIndustry.biz did later on post an update saying this. The firm, as in Sony, they told GameIndustry.biz that it's seeing enthusiasm from PlayStation fans for the upcoming launch, which includes more than 30 titles such as Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Call of the Mountain, and Resident Evil Village. So again, this is a very strange report. Bloomberg is typically reliable, but here, Sony claims they're wrong on this one. So I, I guess just kind of take this one as you will. PlayStation VR 2 will be out on February 22nd. So at the very least, we're not gonna have to wait too long to see what type of success it will end up having. Now, we also got a PlayStation leak to talk about. The much-rumored MMO Horizon game did leak out online, which included early gameplay footage and everything. So, I mean, this was a pretty significant leak. Now, per usual, I'm not going to include any leaked footage on my channel for copyright-related reasons. It, however, is out there if you want to look at pictures or footage or anything like that. But it is important to note that the footage being shared online is quite old. It reportedly is from an early alpha in 2020. That alone, though, I, I think is kind of telling here because that means that this game has been in development for quite a while. It might actually be closer to release than some of us were originally expecting. Even then though, despite this being older footage, it, it certainly doesn't represent the final product per se, but it however did reveal two things. One is that it's a much more stylized game than the mainline Horizon games. We had heard this before from previous rumors, but now that we've seen it for ourselves, it's got more of this cartoony look to it, whereas Horizon is more photorealistic. Now, depending on your own taste, that will kind of depend on whether or not you like its stylized art style. But the other key detail here, and this isn't necessarily overly surprising, but it does appear to be developed with both PlayStation and PC in mind. I mean, Sony is taking PC gaming much more serious now. We've seen this in recent years, but I think especially when it comes to live service games, it just makes too much sense. These games need to be on both PlayStation and PC to better their chances in having success. So yeah, this shouldn't be necessarily overly surprising, but what I will kind of say about this new Horizon MMO 
is that I think with the world of Horizon, because it's such a fascinating setting, really, I think it's one of the most interesting settings in all video games right now, I do think that it will translate well into an MMO environment. Now, again, the art style might be a little different, and I, I can see where people might have differing opinions on that, but we'll get a better representation of how it looks when we get more of an official reveal at a later date, which, again, might actually be closer than some of us were originally expecting. Let's go talk about this Halo situation, though. Over the last few weeks, as many of you all may know, there's been... A lot of concern for Xbox's flagship franchise. 343 was hit with an undefined amount of layoffs, which is never what you want to hear. And then on top of that, there were some crazy, crazy rumors starting to pop up online that further put the community in doubt. Now, those rumors were later debunked and everything. We talked about that before, but, but this time we got a huge report from Jason Schreier over on Bloomberg. Now, I do recommend reading the full report. I will leave that link in the description below. But what we're going to do here is look at some bullet points to highlight some of the things that he discovered while looking into 343's situation. As you can see here, despite laying off around 95 employees, 343 remains the home of Halo for both internal and outsourced Halo games. No new story content was or is currently planned for Halo Infinite. Once again, those rumors were false. Also, and, and here's the big story, Halo is switching over to Unreal Engine for easier development. We'll get into that here in just a second. And then lastly, Certain Affinity is working on the rumored Battle Royale game, but it may have actually evolved. So yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot happening here with Halo in 343. And I know there's going to be a lot of doom and gloom around this story online because negativity, you know, that's, that's always going to get those clicks and everything. But, and, and here's the thing. This ultimately might actually prove to be the best thing for Halo going forward. Now, the reason I say that is because the big story here, again, really is the switch over to Unreal Engine. Now, there is a big if here, which I'll, I'll kind of come back to here in just a second. But first, the reason that this might be good is because of how 343 operates. 343 does a lot of contract work and a lot of outsourcing. Now that's okay and everything, there's nothing wrong with that per se, but the problem in this case, and we've talked about this before with Fable, but when you use a proprietary internal engine like 343 does with Slipspace, these contractors, they come in, and then they have to learn on the job, which in return slows development down. While that might be okay for a strictly single player game like Fable, it's a completely different beast with a games as a service title like Halo Infinite. See, the problem with Halo Infinite has never, ever been about its quality. It won the Player's Voice Award in 2021 for a reason. But rather, with it being a games-as-a-service title, its primary issue later made itself evident. Its lack of consistent post-release content. They just can't create new content fast enough. And Slipspace is one of the reasons as to why. That there, that's where Unreal Engine comes in. More so in this very report, Jason Schreier also said this, several multiplayer modes that are nearly finished, such as Extraction and Assault, have yet to be released in part because of issues involving the Slipspace engine. So there are some legitimate issues with Slipspace, which further explains the switch over to Unreal Engine. Now, with all that said, I don't want to paint this as some type of perfect picture or anything like that, because there is at least one caveat here. With the switch over to Unreal, the question now kind of becomes, can 343 nail the fill of Halo using Unreal Engine? Slipspace, while not necessarily perfect, I mean, you can kind of see that here, but it was specifically made for Halo's physics, which gives it its unique feel. So now they'll need to kind of replicate that using Unreal Engine, and that, that's kind of where the questions come in. If they can do that, though, then ultimately, yes, this could possibly end up being the best for Halo's future long term. Let me know what you all think about this, though. Is it concerning for you, or instead, do you think it's for the best? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so let's just go and get into this E3 situation, though, because last night, IGN posted a big report that the platform holders, being Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox, are all looking to skip out on this year's E3. So... Despite E3's announcement last year that they're making big changes in 2023 by partnering with Reedpop, that was a big move that they announced last year, this, however, was not enough to convince Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft to return. Now, I've seen a lot of disappointment about this online. You know, this is the gamer's holiday after all, and, and thus far, 
Admittedly, I don't know if there has been a replacement that has generated the same feeling, the same hype as past E3s where all the big three and several, several major publishers would all come in, have their own in live person events in a span of like three to five days. E3 was just an incredible, incredible time for gamers. I personally love E3 myself. My friends and I, we used to get together and watch it, but sadly, I, I think that this might actually be its final nail in the coffin. A and the reason for this is because these companies, they, they figured out they don't need E3 to generate views. They don't need to pay this obscene amount of money to the ESA when they can host their own showcases. I mean, if you look at recent years, you have PlayStation, which has pretty much completely ditched E3 already. I mean, they don't even try to align their state of play showcases with E3 or anything by this point. They just kind of do their own thing. It actually seems like they like September more than they like June. Then in Nintendo's case, I mean, they're arguably the one that really has proven that these digital showcases can be very successful. They have their very, very successful Nintendo Directs. I mean, they've been doing a great job with digital showcases for such a long time. Now, they do, however, typically, try and align their directs with E3 and they often reserve booths and everything but according to Andy Robinson over on VGC, Nintendo quote unquote feels it doesn't have enough major releases ready to show that would justify significant event space. Now I will say I do find that to be an interesting statement on its own just because Nintendo I mean, previously they said that they expect to increase Switch units sold in 2023, but at the same time, we, I mean, we keep hearing things like this, you know, that they might not have any more major releases after Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So I feel like that maybe contradicts one another, but you know, nonetheless, the big surprise absence here is Xbox. Microsoft has been E3's biggest supporter in recent years, but and here's the thing. Microsoft, yes, has attached their showcases to E3 in past years, but they've actually been doing their showcase in their own Microsoft theater. This is like right next to the E3 building, so they kind of work together and everything. But from the sound of this report, Microsoft is just kind of doing their own thing this year as well without using the E3 name and their E3 badges. Now, with all that said, Xbox still does have a big summer showcase plan this year. That's already been confirmed. It likely will probably be its usual E3 timeframe being mid-June. But again, it just won't necessarily be attached to E3. So I think what fans should kind of expect is basically what we've seen in the last few years. Xbox, without a doubt, they will have a summer showcase. They've already confirmed that. Nintendo might have a Nintendo Direct. And then there's also the Summer Game Fest, which unironically, Jeff Keighley posted about as soon as this E3 news went live. Jeff did reconfirm that the Summer Game Fest will go live on June 8th. So there absolutely still will be showcases look forward to this summer. But the name of E3, that unfortunately might be a thing of the past. This really might be the final nail of the coffin. Let me know what you think about all of this though. Is it disappointing to you or are you okay with these companies just kind of doing their own thing going forward? Let's go take a look at the poll of the day though. We're asked you all, do you like the idea of a new Uncharted game with a different protagonist that's not developed by Naughty Dog? There does seem to be several job listings that's already kind of hinting at this and then plus Yesterday, there was that new PlayStation promo that seemingly is hinting at some type of unannounced game, which might be Uncharted related. So I wanted to ask you all about this. And as you can see, 29% of you said yes, while 59% of you said no. Now, looking through the comments, there seemed to be a little bit more to this story. I did see some of you mention that you want a new Uncharted, but you want it to remain a Naughty Dog developed game. And then some of you all also like the idea of a new Uncharted game, but are a little iffy on a new protagonist. In that situation, though, I actually really like the idea of Nathan's daughter being the new protagonist because that way Nate is still linked to the story and could even actually be a playable character in certain situations. So I think that would be a good way to continue Uncharted. Plus, I think Uncharted 4 ended his story as the main protagonist just so, so perfectly. Now, I will say this much, though. I do understand some hesitance of a different studio developing it. Naughty Dog will not easily be replicated. That is quite the act to follow. But it does sound like they'll at the very least be overseeing it. On, on top of that, Uncharted has actually gone through this before. Sony Ben developed Uncharted Golden Abyss on the PlayStation Vita, and, and actually I thought that, that was a pretty good game. So I'm personally all for a new Uncharted game under a different studio, but hey, 
it's also one of my favorite series ever made, so maybe maybe I'm just a little bit biased in that sense. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support this channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.